Because you're probably looking at these and going, what does Saturn have to do with typewriter ribbon? What does beavers have to do with typewriter ribbons? What does a cornucopia have to do with typewriter ribbons? Well, that's a very good question. They really don't have anything to do with typewriter ribbons. But, if you think about it, it's a pretty clever marketing scheme. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage of Vinyl, back with another great video for you today. And in this video, I'm thrilled to be sharing one of my more unique collections. Now, if you've been following me for a long time, you know that I love advertising, and I also have a growing collection of typewriter ribbon tins. In fact, one of my first YouTube collaborations was with Patrick, the trusty huckster mercantile. I was his very first guest on his deep dive series, and we talked all about typewriter ribbon tins. And if you have not gotten a chance to see that episode, I'll link it down below. And definitely go subscribe to Patrick. He's got some fabulous content. Now in this video I'll be sharing my collection with you as well as giving you a little history on typewriter ribbon tens. All of this and more coming right up. So most people don't realize that typewriter ribbon tens are as old as the 1800s but they are. They go all the way back to 1874. Now in 1874 the very first typewriter was invented and that was the Remington Shoals typewriter and at that point they did not have ribbon tins. Actually ribbons were just sold loose with the typewriters and they had to be sent back for re-inking. Can you imagine what a mess that was? You're typing along on your typewriter, you run out of ink and now you gotta wait for the mail to deliver your ribbon all the way back to the company and then they have to re-ink it and send it back out. That just wasn't working very well. So Remington invented a way for people to be able to get fresh ribbons by creating a box that would hold the loose ribbons that would be able to be shipped to general stores and people would be able to get fresh ribbons whenever they wanted. And that was how the typewriter ribbon tin came to be. Now early typewriter ribbon tins actually do not include spools and that is because ribbons at this point were still loose but they were just housed in flat, long, rectangular boxes to keep them fresh. So this is one of the first typewriter ribbon tins that you see. This is from um, probably 1876, something like that. Uh, very early ribbon tin here. These are the flat, rectangular ones. And then typewriter ribbon tins begin to change because, of course, these loose ribbons had to be put on by hand, and that was a real pain, and they were very messy and very wide. So they came up with the invention of ribbon spools, which really did change uh, the game for a lot of people because all you had to do was then put in the brand new spool as opposed to trying to thread that ribbon in the typewriter. So they invented ribbon tall tins, and these tins house ribbons that are one and one half inch in size. This is an early uh, Paragon ribbon box that's a lot larger than the typewriter ribbon tins most of us are used to seeing. Now, now what really changed the game was Underwood's invention of their typewriter in 1895. Now you see Underwood had a contract with Remington and they made the ribbons for Remington typewriters. But at some point Remington cut ties with them and said, you know what, we're going to do all of this in house. And that made Underwood really mad. And they decided to seek revenge by creating a typewriter that wouldn't have these big cumbersome large ribbons. They invented the Underwood typewriter and their ribbons were only one half an inch. That really changed the game and set the industry standard in 1895 for what most of us know as these little small round tens because now ribbons were being sold in the smaller size on spools and they were a lot easier to deal with. So that is really the history of typewriter ribbon tens and I have quite a few varieties in my collection and I can't wait to share them with you. 
Now, for most of you guys that are wanting to get started into collecting ribbon tens, I highly recommend picking up a book by Daryl Rare. Now, he is a guy that has collected typewriter ribbon tens for years and years, along with office collectibles, and he's very knowledgeable, and he wrote a book. Now, I am not sponsored by him, but I did have the pleasure to talk to him on the phone for about 30 minutes. So, Daryl, I'm sure you're not watching this, but if you are, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. He's a fascinating guy full of knowledge and has some really unique typewriter ribbon tens in his collection. And this is one of the first books that I've ever found that actually feature ribbon tens. So if you are looking to get started in ribbon collecting, I highly recommend picking up Antique Typewriters and Office Collectibles by Daryl Rare. You can get this for a couple of dollars on Thrift Books, and it is a really fabulous read if you just love typewriters, old office collectibles, and of course, ribbon tens. Now, when collecting ribbon tents, really all you have to do is go to your local antique store, garage sale, or flea market, wherever you go find vintage, and just pick out one you like. There are literally thousands of designs. Many companies produce these. Of course, you have the companies that made the typewriters also made ribbons, but then you have all kinds of other brands that were made specifically for grocery stores or hotel chains. There's just thousands of different ribbons out there that you can collect, and they're very fun. Of course, some of the earlier ribbon tents, the tall tents and the flat boxes, are a little harder to find and can command a high price tag, but most of these range anywhere from eight to ten dollars. Of course, some of the early ones can go to thirty to fifty dollars, depending on which one it is. And there's a few of the round ones that are quite rare that I have in my collection that I'll show you as well. But all you have to do is go out and find your first ribbon and have fun because they really are a great collection and they have so many cool designs. All right, so let's go take a look at some awesome ribbons. Okay guys, so this is my typewriter ribbon tin collection. Now, most of my typewriter ribbon tins are housed on my grandfather's steel master cabinet from the radio station, and the rest are housed on this late 1950s RCA electron tubes display. These are my antique and more specialized ribbons, and then down here I have all of my fabulous square and round ribbon tins. Now, this may seem a little hodgepodgey, but if you stay tuned to Instagram, you will be seeing my new ribbon display soon. Yes, I got a fabulous advertising piece from Lyrics Vintage on Instagram. If you're not following her, what are you doing? She has an amazing account, and I can't wait to get this uh, shaving cream display in with three uh, dipped shells because it's going to be absolutely perfect for all of these ribbons and my office collectibles. So I'm going to get all of that organized and I'm going to have a little fabulous display on top of the Steel Master cabinet. So stay tuned to my Instagram because I will be showing you that really awesome display very soon. Okay, so let's jump into the ribbons. So all of these ribbons are just really neat. There are so many different designs and styles, really something for everybody. And one of the things that I bet a lot of you guys are noticing is the designs, because you're probably looking at these and going, what does Saturn have to do with typewriter ribbon? What does beavers have to do with typewriter ribbons? What does a cornucopia have to do with typewriter ribbons? Well, that's a very good question. They really don't have anything to do with typewriter ribbons, but if you think about it, it's a pretty clever marketing scheme. See, most of these were marketed towards secretaries and peoples in offices back in the day. And this was at a time period when people didn't just throw things away willy-nilly. They wanted you to reuse these. So they marketed them really with beautiful designs so that you would reuse the tin and it would catch your eye if you were out buying ribbon. One of my favorite ribbon tins is this Panama ribbon tin. Now this one's pretty easy to find. It's got some really cool graphics with that airplane on it. And what's neat about this one is when you open it up, it actually advertises that you could reuse it. Look, there's a paper clip and a, a safety pen and a, a fishing hook. I mean, there's all these really, really cool designs on the inside advertising what you could do with this after you use the typewriter ribbon. I just think that is incredibly clever. 
So most of these were probably reused and a lot of times when you find these you'll find little whatnots inside because people actually did reuse the ribbons. So a couple of my other favorite ribbon tens include this Columbia ten. Now this is the Columbia Ribbon Twins. I think that's what collectors have kind of named this ten. And there are several varieties of this one. Of course, this is one that's a little harder to find and you probably will pay up for it when you see it. But it's worth it because this just has some fabulous graphics. I love the ballerinas. The side has that cool striping and then the back has some fabulous graphics. Now I've kind of done a little bit of a deep dive as far as dating these ribbon tents because it's not always easy to date advertising. And one of the ways you can date these of course is by size because after 1895 they kind of switched to half inch ribbon. So when you see a half inch ribbon size or these smaller tens you know it's got to be after 1895. Uh, when you see the taller tens, one and one half inch, you know that's kind of before things got standardized. Now I do think it took a while for things to totally convert to that smaller ribbon size because other typewriters were still being produced that took the larger size. So that's one way that you can date typewriter ribbon tens, but you can also date it by the color of the ink. So I was doing a little bit of reading and I did discover that when you find typewriter ribbons that have black record ink only, that's typically a little bit older than the black red record ink. And then when you see typewriter ribbons, and I'll show some in a minute that have the purple copying, those sometimes can be earlier because in really early letterheads you do see purple ink. So I find that really fascinating. Now I haven't verified that that's 100% true, but it is something that you can do more research on yourself and it's a very fascinating little deep dive into ink colors. I just adore this Columbia tin and it's one of my favorites in my collection. I also love this preferred tin. Now this is one that's a little uncommon. You don't see it a whole lot. But when you do see it, it's fun, and I really am glad I picked this up. I love the seahorse graphics, and of course, uh, just some cool little advertisement on the back. I think this is fantastic. Another one that you don't see a whole lot of is this Bell typewriter ribbon, and I think it's very clever with the Bell, and it's got some really cool uh, pin striping down the side and on the back. It's just a fantastic typewriter ribbon tin. I also love this tin, this Manhattan ribbon, uh, marathon ribbon. I got this from Mickey. Mickey Thrifting in the Holler sent me this, and I just adore this. That orange color is fantastic, and it's got some really fabulous graphics on it. Now, uh, most of these ribbon tins I've been finding at antique stores on eBay, and then of course a few of you guys have sent me some really fabulous ribbons, so thank you all so very much. Now another way you can date typewriter ribbon tins is not only by the size and judging by the graphics or maybe looking at the ink color, but you can date typewriter ribbons by looking at who made the ribbon tins. See, the ribbon tins were made separately from the ribbons themselves. So if you look on the side, some of the ribbon tins are actually marked. And one of them that I have here is Superb Superb. Now Patrick, trusty huckster mercantile, found this for me in Illinois. And I have to say, I think he gets a lot more typewriter ribbon tins than we do here because he's been hitting the jackpot lately. But this is a Superb Superb tin. It's pretty uncommon. There are several varieties of this one, but this one with the beaver in the corner is a little harder to find. And what's neat about this is I was actually able to kind of date this because on the side, I was able to tell that it's made by decorated metal. So a lot of these typewriter ribbon tins were made by decorated metal. Sometimes you just see a DG, sometimes they're decorated metal, but that does really help you date them. Of course, there were other companies, the American Can Company made a lot of them. Even Anchor Hawking made typewriter ribbon tins. Yes, Anchor Hawking did. This is a fabulous Carter's five o'clock ribbon tin with the Anchor Hawking logo on the side. Now, I believe Anchor Hawking only made ribbon tins for a small time, but most of them you'll find are made by Decorated Metal or the American Hand Company. 
Now, when you see typewriter ribbon tens, and I'll show uh, some examples very soon when we get to some of these antique ones, is you'll find that they're made by companies like the Colony Can Company or the Mercer Company or a whole variety of others. And those, you know, are older because the American Can Company bought all of those companies out in the 1900s. So you can really help date tens that way by looking for the small marks on the side. And yes, sometimes they are very tiny. The next ribbon tent I wanted to share with you guys is this one. Now this is Carter's Midnight, and this is a great one if you're wanting to start a typewriter ribbon tent collection because they're very inexpensive. They're just like the Panama tens. They're a dime a dozen, you can find them everywhere, and they just have some great graphics. I love that space graphic with the silver. It's just really spectacular. Another 10 that you see quite a bit of, but I think it's just awesome, is this tight bar ribbon tin by Smith and Corona. Just cool graphics, really neat little ribbon tin. Love that black and red. And again, one, if you're starting a collection, these are the perfect ones to start with because you'll find them everywhere. Now, this one's a little bit harder to find, and this is Queen brand typewriter ribbon, and I just think it's fantastic. Look at the crown. Now, of course, this one's seen some better days. Some of these aren't in the most fabulous of shape, and that's just because they've had a long life doing many duties. <laughs> but I love this Queen brand ribbon, and they really are just so different and unique. Each ribbon tent has such a cool design. And of course, when you're buying these, price really does depend on common, how common it is, um, of course, its condition, and whether or not uh, the ribbon is still inside. I, I do think that sometimes having the ribbon inside does increase the value a little bit because there are collectors that are wanting the ribbons to be inside and then there are those people looking to refurbish old typewriters and they're actually looking for sealed ribbons. Of course, if you're refurbishing a typewriter, you still can get typewriter ribbon today on Amazon or go to a local typewriter store that specializes in fixing old typewriters. We have a great one here called McDavid's and they specialize in all that kind of thing. This next 10 was sent to me by Carrie, KCATX. I just love this. She sent me a whole bunch of ribbon tins from Pamela Blanchard's sale for my birthday, and this is emerald. Now, this one you do not see a whole lot of, and I love the graphics on this. This is absolutely fantastic, and I'm just thrilled to have this in my collection. I also love these Art Deco tins, and this one's a fine service brand with the airplane. Now this one's a little bit uncommon. You don't see this one a whole lot either. And I just think those Art Deco clouds are really, really spectacular. Now there's a few others here that I wanted to highlight. This one I recently got from Tim at Over the Years. This is Kodo Typo Craft Ribbon. And I haven't seen this one before and I just love the Art Deco clouds. I think it's really spectacular and it's square, and you'll see tens that are square and round, and I just think this one is wonderful. And what's really cool about it is when you open it on the side, it is made by decorated metal. Just so really cool. Now, a couple of other tins that I love include this Eureka tin, and you'll find this one quite a bit. I think there were several colors made of this, but I love the Art Deco graphics really amazing. And then I also recently picked up this Plenty Copy Ribbon Tin by the Multag and Volter Company. Probably not saying that right, but you'll see their name on a lot of typewriter ribbons. And this one's also made by Decorated Metal, which is very cool. Some of those marks are pretty hard to see, so the camera might not be able to pick it up. But trust me, it's there. Plenty Copy. Underwood Portable Black Record Medium Ink. Now, this one you can find quite a bit of. There is a white version of this. It's not as easy to find, but this is Carter's Ideal, and it's got the little cameo. But what's neat about this is the back is actually paper, the bottom part. So you've got the tin on top and then the paper on the bottom, that really amazing Art Deco font. I also got this one recently, and this is fantastic. This is McGregor Ribbon. Now, this one's not as easy to find, and it's got that really cool Scottish graphic on the front. Love the bagpipes, 
and I am thrilled to have this in my collection. Now, Christine at Side Street Market was so sweet. A lot of you guys send me typewriter ribbons, and they're just wonderful. And this is another one that I adore, and Christine at Side Street Market sent this to me, and I love it. This one's one that you just don't see a lot of, and so I was really happy to add this to my collection because I had been looking for it for a while. And there's so many different designs. Look at this star silk ribbon. Isn't that very cool? And then you have things with more Art Deco graphics like this Elwood ribbons and carbon. And you've got gold crest with the crown. I mean, just spectacular. All of these ribbon tins were just decorated to the hilt. And it really, really is amazing to see all the different designs. And there were literally thousands of these made which is just amazing to me. Look at the Paramount tin, the graphics on that, so deco, as well as this Underwood typewriter ribbon tin. Got those amazing art deco graphics. This one's probably from the 30s, just spectacular. And then you've got one of my other favorites. This is Ditto. Now, this one's pretty simple, but I just love this. And there's a square version of this too that's a little bit harder to find. And I just love this. It's simple. It's clever, it's got an ode to writing, and it is absolutely fantastic in that green color. There are just so many ribbons here to show that I can't really show them all in this video, but again, if you stay tuned to my Instagram channel, I'll definitely be sharing these in a more up-close setting so you can actually take a look at the graphics. So I'll give you just a little pan of some of the ones down here. And now we're going to take a look at some of my antique ribbons. Okay, so these are my antique ribbon tins. Now I do have a few others on here that aren't antique. They just are really awesome and they are special to me, so they kind of get pride of place up here on this display. The first three I'm actually gonna show you are not antique, but they are holy grail finds. Uh, these have been on my vintage want list for a long time, and I finally found them this year. So uh, 2021 and the vintage hunting is really off to a great start. One of the ones I found is this hi-hat typewriter ribbon tin, and I don't want to use the word rare because I do think that it gets overused, but I will say this one is pretty rare. You just never see it come up for sale, and I was really thrilled to add it to my collection. I also got this Carter's Dragon, and everybody wants the Carter's Dragon because it is so amazing. The graphics are just stunning, but it's one that just never comes up for sale, and I've never seen it in the wild. So I was really excited to find this for a great price on eBay. And then once I got this one, about a week later, Patrick, trusty huckster mercantile that finds all the amazing typewriter ribbon tins, messaged me and said, would you like to buy this one? And I was like, absolutely. My mind was just blown. I was so excited to have both Carter's Dragons now. And what's really cool about this one that Patrick found is it still has the ribbon on the inside and it's actually made by Anchor Hawking, which is just really cool. So yay, way to go, Patrick. That was amazing. Now this next ribbon is antique. It's from 1904. And uh, I found this at Eco Relics, and this is the Leaping Gazelle. It's one that you just don't see a whole lot of, but it's not particularly rare. You can find it, but it's got some amazing deco graphics. And this one actually was marked 1904, and it's got uh, little pens and all kinds of, you know, different things because someone actually reused this tin, which I think is awesome. Now, this is made by the E.W. Strouts Company, and it's got that uh, cool uh, inside there with all the little whatnots. Now, the E.W. Strouts Company is one of those earlier manufacturers of tins. So when you see some of those early manufacturers, you can really date a tin that way. I do think for these one and one half inch sizes, these taller tins, it did probably take a while for them to go completely away because a lot of the other typewriters were still being made that took that larger ribbon. So I do think that those continue into the 30s, but you can always look for the manufacturers. And of course, when you see these tall tins, you just know that they're older. So I'm gonna show some of those to you now. I've got some really cool ones. So this is Taggart. And then I've got high class, 
uh, really cool typewriter tens. And then this one's really neat. This is Primer, and I love this one. This one's not one that you see a whole lot of. Actually, all of these tall tens are pretty hard to find. And this one's got the purple record. It's just absolutely amazing. And this one's actually made by the American Can Company. Now, what's significant about that is the American Can Company bought out a lot of tin manufacturers in 1901. That's when they started. So when you see the American Can Company, that does really help you date tins. And I think that this one's really cool. So this one's probably from around that time. This one is made by Durable and it's the Dodge Company, and this one's got some great graphics on it. I love how they took time to actually decorate the lids. I just think that's amazing. And this one's also made by the American Can Company. The marks are really little, and the camera's probably not gonna pick that up, but down at the bottom, in tiny, tiny letters, you can see that it was made by the American Can Company. Now, I wanted to share this one because it's actually not a typewriter ribbon tin. This is a dressiograph. Now, this was made for address machines, so there actually were a whole bunch of other ribbons that were out there used for other types of machines, adding machines, addressiograph machines, and the list really does go on. So this is a neat addition to my collection, and really you could classify it as a typewriter ribbon, but it's technically for the addressiograph machine. Now this one's the harder one to find because it's got the dark gray background. The lighter gray backgrounds are really easy to find, and they are a dime a dozen. But this one's more unique because of its darker background, and it just has some very cool graphics that alternate on the side and on the top. Now, this one here is typewriter ribbons, and I'm gonna not pull this one down because I think it's a little easier to see on the red background, but look at the graphics on that. Is that not amazing? That shiny blue with the silver is just stunning. And then this one's high grade, and I love the Art Nouveau style of that tin. I think it's really wonderful. And Patrick found these, and I was able to add them to my collection. This is Smith Primer, and this is another special ribbon that's just really hard to find. Amazing. And this one's made by the M.L. Hudson Company out of Brooklyn, New York. And that's an older tin manufacturer, and it's just got some really amazing, amazing graphics on it. So I am thrilled to have this in my collection. And then this one is one that you don't see a whole lot of. Of course, lately I've been seeing more of them, but when I first started collecting, I never could find this one. So I actually had to get it from England. But this is Paragon Ribbons. It's one of the earlier tins. And on the side, you can see that this one was manufactured by the Colony Can Company. And the Colony Can Company is one of the companies that got bought out by the American Can Company in 1901. So fantastic advertisement piece and you definitely know it's older because it's the Colony Can Company. I've got a few other really cool tall tins. This is Typewriter Ribbons. It's a Republic brand and there were a bunch of these tall tins as well manufactured but they're just not as easy to find because they are antiques and older and I love the graphics on this one. That green is fantastic really, really stunning. This was the Republic Dodge Manufacturing Company. And this one's got some cool graphics as well. This one is really, to me, sort of Art Nouveau and just gorgeous. And this is Moon Hopkins. And look at that. Just amazing. I love that it advertises indelible because that's an, an earlier term on tens that you'll see is that indelible ink. And I think this is cool. It's got a unique shape at the bottom and just really fabulous. And I really hope the camera is picking these up. It is sort of hard to see because they are shiny. And even against this white wall, the camera doesn't want to seem to uh, pick these up. But I love that. Now, this one is really hard to find. And again, this was another holy grail find of 2021. And this is Carter's Ideal Company Ribbon. And the graphics on this are stunning. Look at this at the top. I hope the camera's getting these. I just love this. It says it's really good <laughs> on the side. What a great advertisement. And this is a dark yellow. 
and it's just got some fabulous graphics so that one is beautiful i also have this carter's as well now this is carter's ideal and it's got some cool blue graphics a really neat design on the side again this one's one that is just easier to see against this red so i'm going to leave it up there I also have this cool Keylox Company 10. Now, this has some amazing Art Deco graphics, and it's actually round, it's not square. So I love that. Now, Keylox is one that you can find quite a bit, and I believe some of these were also for adding machines, these Keylox 10s. So I love that one. And then this one's pretty unique as well, this purple one. Uh, you don't see it a whole lot either. And let me see if I can pull this down for you so you can see it. Because it's not easy to see these. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. But this is maple leaf typewriter ribbon. And look, at one point it was a dollar. And this is for purple record. So that is an earlier ink color that was used on some uh, early, early type fonts. I think you'll see letterheads used with this purple uh, ink. So I think that is very cool. Great advertisement piece there. And then up top are my really special ribbons. Now, Nate in New Zealand sent me this ribbon here and I love, love, love the graphics on this and that red color. So Nate, this one's up here. It's very special and it's uh, from our guy Nate. So I adore this one. And this one here is not antique either, but it is awesome. And it came from Debbie, Debbie at our Vagabond Travel. So I've got it up top and it is very special. Now this ribbon I recently got and I was thrilled to get it. It's got this really cool Art Deco design. It's actually an orange tin and it's got this kind of like fish scale looking design and I think it is so cool. So I absolutely adore this ribbon tin and was really thrilled to add it to my collection for only $4. Now this is another great example of ribbon tins that weren't made for typewriters. This is Burroughs and this was for an adding machine, but it's a tall tin and it's got some great graphics. Now I'm going to end with some of my favorite ribbon tins and these are holy grail finds for me. These are ones you just never, ever, ever, ever see. So when I found them online, I was like jumping out of my my skin, I was so excited, just jumping around and being very, very excited. Uh, these are early, early, early ribbon tins. These are the flat tins before ribbons were ever sold on spools. And these are the Remington Company typewriter ribbons. Now these you just don't see ever. I've never seen them. And the only way I found these was I had typed in vintage typewriter ribbon tin and the person had this listed as a vintage typewriter ribbon tin for watercolor paint. So what they had done is converted this with little compartments magnetized inside where you could put your watercolor paints and then travel with this. So it really was great because I knew what it was and they didn't. <laughs> So this is an early tin. This is the flat style box when ribbons were just sold loose in boxes before they were sold on spools. So this is really a great example of one of the very first typewriter ribbon tins that was manufactured uh, before 1895. So this is very early and it's got the uh, Mercer Company, which is an early manufacturer of tins. And it's got the indelible on the back and it's just amazing so i was really thrilled to get this one and then i found this one and it's sort of like the dragon tins not a week later i found this one uh, i might have been the same people because they had it listed as a uh, a traveling art kit vintage typewriter traveling art kit and this is the remington uh, flat box as well but this one is for purple copying so this is fabulous, a really amazing example of early typewriter ribbon tins. Uh, so the last one I'll show here and we will wrap up this video is this Miller Line ribbon. I got this from Patrick and this is a fantastic graphics there with that bumblebee. I love Miller Line and it is a wonderful addition to my collection. So guys, that is going to do it for us today. I think I've covered pretty much all of the ones that I 
can show in this video and of course I will be sharing more on Instagram so make sure you go follow me over there for some up close personal tour of my collection and of course when I get that typewriter display set up I will be sharing that as well. Well guys that was it for my typewriter ribbon tin collection. I hope you enjoyed seeing it. It was a lot of fun to film and showcase some of my favorite typewriter ribbon tins. Of course I've got so many and I really do love them all. I hope this video inspires you to start a new collection of something fun or just do a little deep dive of your own into typewriter ribbon tins or typewriters in general. So guys, I'll be seeing you in the meantime on Instagram, so make sure you go follow me at vintage underscore and underscore vinyl. And I hope as always, you will stay in, stay safe, and veg YouTube. Bye-bye now. Whip, whip.